നമസ്കാരം ഇന്ന് ഒരു ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ സീരീസ് ആയിട്ടാണ് ഞാൻ വന്നിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ഇന്ന് നമ്മുടെ ഒപ്പം ഉള്ളത് ബന്ധൻ മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ടിൻ്റെ സി ഇ ഒ ആയിട്ടുള്ള വിഷാൽ കപൂർ സാറിന് നമ്മുടെ ഒപ്പം ഉള്ളത് അദ്ദേഹം ബോംബെയിൽ നിന്ന് വന്നിരിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പോൾ കേരളത്തിൽ ഇന്ന് വിസിറ്റ് ചെയ്യണം അപ്പോൾ ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് ഒരു ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ തരാമെന്ന് സമ്മതിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഈ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ സാറ് കൽക്കട്ടയിൽ തരാൻ അപ്പോൾ സാറിനോട് ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലായിരിക്കും സംസാരിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് ആസ് യൂഷ്വൽ വളരെ സിമ്പിളായിട്ട് എങ്ങനെ മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ട് ഒരു മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ട് കമ്പനി മാനേജ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സി ഇ ഒയുടെ നിന്ന് പഠിക്കാമെന്നുള്ള ഇന്നത്തെ ഒരു ആഗ്രഹം അപ്പോൾ വെൽക്കം സാർ ഐ വാസ് ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസിങ് അബൌട്ട് യു ആൻഡ് വട്ട് ഇസ് കോണ്ടസ്റ്റ് വി ആർ സെറ്റിംഗ് സോ ജസ്റ്റ് ടു ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് വിഷാൽ സാർ ഇസ് സി ഇ ഓഫ് ബന്ധൻ മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ട് ഏർലിയർ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഐ ഡി എഫ് സി ആൻഡ് ഐ ഹാവ് വാസ്റ്റ് ഐ ഡി എഫ് സീസ് വീഡിയോസ് ആൻഡ് ലോഡ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റഡി മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് ആൻഡ് ടോക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് യുവർ പ്രൊഫൈൽ യു യു ആർ വൺ തിങ് ഇസ് എറ്റ് യു ആർ ഫ്രം കൽക്കട്ട ആൻഡ് ഐ തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ലോഡ് ഓഫ് കണക്ഷൻ വിത്ത് മലയാളീസ് ആൻഡ് കൽക്കട്ട വി ലവ് ഫിഷ് വി ലവ് അവർ പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ ഐഡിയോളജിയോളജി ഐ ഹാവ് സീൻ ദാറ്റ് വെൻ ഐ വാസ് ഇൻ റോയിറ്റേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ഇൻ ജേർണലിസം ടീം മെജോറിറ്റി പീപ്പിൾ വെർ ഫ്രം കൽക്കട്ട ആൻഡ് കേരള സോ ഐ തിങ്ക് അവർ ഇൻക്ലൂഷൻ ടുവേഴ്സ് റീഡിങ് ആൻഡ് അതർ തിങ്സ് ഓൾസോ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഐ ഐ തിങ്ക് So, sir, uh, you know, your profile, it's uh, really beautiful. You have worked in uh, Standard Chartered Wealth Management phase. And uh, that is what we also do it in a very smaller way. You have seen international and you have seen uh, Indian version also. And uh, your experience and your studies in IAMB and uh, everything. <laughs> If you could take us through that experience first, then we will uh, dive into the interview further. Sure. So firstly thanks for having me and it's lovely to be here and thank you sir I think your 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 thoughts about Kerala and Bengal you know they, they it relates so much you know uh, fish is a lot of greenery a lot of rain as we have uh, you know right now uh but yeah that's where I was born and I grew up and then I uh, I studied partly in Calcutta partly in Ahmedabad at the I am there and then uh, worked in Mumbai Gurgaon New York and then got back to Mumbai so that's been my journey so far okay very good sir uh, you you had a uh, privilege to work with uh, mx and uh, uh, sandy chanter and uh, there you managed at dusri and uh, wealth management that's right so so what are the best practices they follow in terms of managing their personal wealth mm-hmm. and just comparing that with the indians yeah. are we uh, doing the same thing or are we doing better or do we need to really pick up that what is your sense I think uh, see the principles across the world are not very different I would say uh, you know I think it's just the stage of evolution different countries different markets are at mm-hmm. and uh, you know some may have different types of products which are also based on where the rules and regulations are for that country uh, and uh, you know one of the things I've noted is that uh, at at one point in time in in Amex uh, based out of New York I was in charge of about 16 odd countries uh, not in charge in the sense that I had the oversight for products for these 16 odd countries uh, you know from countries who were just about starting to save and you know get the first set of investment products introduced to countries which only dealt with derivatives as in anything uh lower than derivatives was not something that was palatable but the concept still remains the same i, I you know it's just uh, at its core it's just some amount of what we think is sophistication and then you saw the curve come trend back where people said no actually the derivatives don't work and let's make life simple so i think it's a bit of a cycle of evolution that everyone goes through uh, okay okay so i come come to your um, the company as such uh, <laughs> now bandhan uh, and before uh, idfc right uh, one thing which uh, i can really um, relate to idfc before uh, we are we were associating with is that the kind of effort you are putting into education yes uh, this uh, the movie 1d8 and everything i'm sure yes. that we will yes. put it in the description uh, and link to right. to uh, tell that what is that movie and people can watch that right so what is the importance uh, which you think that uh, needed in india for uh, financial education or financial literacy space uh, and after doing all these things uh, have you seen that change in our uh, uh, you know our, our people that uh, they they become mature in terms of money and everything can you take us through that sure so i think uh, I, i think for most of us in the industry the importance of 
uh, awareness around financial assets is very, very apparent. I think, uh, you know, whether you look at some of the data, whether you look at behavior around us. So if you look at the data as an instance, uh, even today, while our own mutual fund industry or the asset management industry has grown so rapidly and so healthily over the last 20, 25 years, uh, despite that, if you look at household savings mm -hmm. as a total report, and look at the proportion of that that goes into anything to do with capital markets, which is you know taking a bit of risk and really aiming for growth rather than just preservation, okay. right? Uh, that is still abysmally low okay. Uh, okay. in the sense you know that last count it was just about four or five percent. Okay. So only four rupees or five rupees out of your hundred rupees saved okay. is actually going into capital market products means the balance 95 is going largely into preservation type products, mm -hmm. right? So that's the statistic of it. But behaviorally, isn't that something we also see? So growing up, for example, uh, you know, people around me or, you know, parents, uncles, aunties, etc. Everyone was a very, very diligent saver. Right? Oh, okay. so everyone wants to earn and make sure that you're saving something and expenses have to be curtailed, etc. And despite that, I think we see around us that most people still have retirement as the number one worry. And you really worry about the fact that will you have enough money uh, to last your retirement? And, you know, are you going to be dependent on someone, you know, maybe your, your children or someone else? Uh, so that remains a bit of a worry, uh, even through surveys, even today, that uh, tends to be the largest part of what people uh, are concerned about in terms of the future. Will I have enough money okay. uh, to re lead an independent, financially independent life? Okay. And you combine the two, saying if people are saving so much, why is it that retirement and some of these rel relatively simple goals are so complicated? Okay. So that sort of gets you thinking, saying, you know, what is happening? So clearly financial awareness mm. is a big need mm. because uh, I think as as many of us in the financial services industry and some of the good work you're doing uh, will tell us that it's not such a difficult problem to solve. You know, okay, can I, can I, sir, uh, you, you mentioned about uh, the, the kind of savings we have. Uh, you know, there are, I think we have a uh, older generation, we were uh, pretty good at the savings and cutting down the expense and everything. But uh, are you seeing the same trend when it comes to the new uh, generation? Uh, are there really savers? Uh, and what is your uh, thought around? So I think uh, so. some amount of the savings rate is coming down, mm. which may not necessarily be a, such a bad thing because that means that, you know, people are consuming more and in a growing economy, you know, you need a healthy mix of both. You need the capital that will come through savings and you also need consumption to drive growth. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, uh, savings rate has been coming down. But that doesn't mean we are low relative to global standards, okay. uh, right? So we are still a fairly healthy uh, savings yes. rate uh, as, a, as, a, as a society. But also, what is increasingly happening, and you know, coming to the earlier to the to the other part of the question you asked earlier, uh, there is some good moves about getting to getting started with investing. And I like to just uh, sort of define the terms, right? Saving for me, or f you know, for many of us is just, uh, you know, keeping the money passive. You know, you just had an income, you, ex you spent something and part of that left is saving and typically you put it a a away into a bank account or some such uh, place. But investing is when you make a decision with that money. You say, okay, how do I grow it? Mm. Now, it could be equity, it could be something else. It could be bonds, it could be real estate, it could be, you know. So when you take an active step, that's investing. And that we are seeing increasingly is happening a lot more. Especially the younger generation, they are more aware. Uh, they are starting early. And they are being, I think, more diversified in their approach. But we still have miles to go. Okay. Like I said, the pot is just about 4 or 5% four percent into capital markets or, or risk-taking products. It's still predominantly fixed income and very conservative. Yeah, correct. Uh, sir, uh, we, we, we spoke about investing uh, yeah. now, right? So, but um, uh, why do you really not want to invest? And, uh, and now, if you look at uh, preserving, there are people, uh, we have an assumption that there are people keeping that money in FD. But uh, if you yeah. really look at it, there are a lot of people are still keeping in savings account. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, then, uh, then coming to FD. And yeah. th there are there are cases where there's uh, years they are keeping that yeah. in assembly in uh, uh, savings account. Savings account. Then now they are thinking to move into 
FD. Yeah. But uh, moving to market, it's like they think that it's a, yeah. a very yeah. risky business. Yeah. And um, uh, could you please take us through that? Uh, what is that need and that benefit uh, people yeah. get uh, that uh, yeah. moving to investing and why they need to come yeah. to capital markets? That's basically. Yeah. And, and this is very pertinent, Nikhil, because uh, you know I'll relate back to uh, you know my own family members where. Uh, you know, the concept of inflation mm. is not something that hits us at all because it's just invisible, it's always there, but, you know, you really don't see it. And, uh, you know, what most of us, including, you know, my own family, does not realize that every day that that money is, you think it is gaining, it may actually be losing if price increases more than the rate at which your money is growing, right? So a typical savings account, for example, may be able to grow your money because you think you're getting some interest at two and a half, three, four percent. But if inflation is much more than that, the value of that rupee is eroding all the time. So at one level, if you're saving and the rate at which that is growing is less than inflation, you're actually losing money. And we thought we were saving. And it brings back to the earlier point I said that, you know, why is it that people keep saving for, for a lifetime and still don't have enough? Because you did not invest. It was losing money all the time. So you were saving, but the value was eroding much faster than you thought. Which is why, by investing, the first goal has to be, you have to beat inflation. You have to actually, in real terms, as we call it, grow that money. Which means the return you expect should be more than the underlying rate of inflation, which is the loss of value that you will see over a period of time. Unless you're doing that... Mm -hmm. You know, financial security for you and your family is going to be a challenge. And that, to me, is the number one uh, invisible uh, enemy that one has to almost fight uh, when you think about money. Uh, sir, I think when we look at uh, investing assets, right, I think these days uh, all of us are uh, pretty much heard about SIP and uh, uh, mutual fund it, and because thanks to a lot of advertisement which uh, 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 Amphi is doing and uh, people like uh, AMCs are doing, people like us are doing. So these things that it's generated a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, buzz around it and people are thinking SIP. So could you define what is SIP? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh so SIP at a simplest of, uh, at its definition level is a systematic investment plan which allows you to systematically, which is periodically and in a disciplined or a rule-based manner, invest a certain amount for a period of time, right? That's at a basic level. But actually the very simple product is a lot more than what meets the eye at the first level. Because what you're really doing at the second level, is uh, you're benefiting from discipline, which is one of the biggest behavioral traps when it comes to investing. Uh, so world over, if, if any experienced investor will tell you that actually your own behavioral biases actually are the biggest stumbling block to becoming a successful investor. And an SIP in enforcing that discipline is helping you get over that. Number two, the way an SIP works is that it puts a fixed amount at a choose, chosen periodicity at whatever the market value is. And that gives you a beautiful mathematical benefit of what is called rupee cost averaging, which is very simply that if prices are high, since you're putting the same fixed amount, you would buy less of that asset. And when prices are low, because again, this fixed amount is, 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 is standardized, you will buy more of that asset, which means over time, your average cost of buying an asset will be far more beneficial than many others because you're averaging it out and you're getting that benefit of rupee cost average, right? And three, because of the discipline and the rupee cost averaging and our promotion about saying start today, don't procrastinate, don't you know, make it simple, more, make it affordable. Often, I think all of us want a sizable pot and then we say, oh, let the money get to this level or that level, and then I will invest, right? So it's procrastinating, which is also losing time, right? By making it immediate or making it really easy to start with, you know, we have funds where you can start an SIP at 100 rupees. So you really have no uh, excuse uh, to start, right? 
and uh, therefore i want to challenge people you know what is getting in your way you can start it now you can start it with a click of a button you know a few few uh, clicks and you're done what's getting in your way so we want to encourage people to start early because the third huge benefit that starting early gives you is the benefit of compounding which people have called as the eighth wonder of the world which is uh, you know something we should all use yeah yeah no i think i think uh, in terms of uh, showing all these things in a very simple manner uh, idfc uh, bandhan has done a brilliant job because uh, everything there are a lot of workshops which you have brought in right. and for our audience also we have done uh, samki samasya and all these things which right. i mentioned already right and uh, there are there are one thing which uh, uh, we 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 spoke about this right we speak about averaging right? yeah and uh, everyone have this question right Every, most of the people have is it the right time to invest because now market is on a all <laughs> <laughs> time i all time high, high. <laughs> and uh, uh, is it the right time to start so uh, what is your uh, take on uh, asking this question all this while i have it started i was waiting but now it's a all time high so uh, is it the right time to start or i will start after some time what <laughs> <laughs> you know this is uh, this is a question there for everyone right uh, yeah so for anyone in your audience uh, you know who has savings uh, which is still lying in a passive savings instrument like a savings account and if they were to ask me you know i'm waiting for the market to correct to start if i could yeah. i would hold their hands and get them to click and start today because please do not waste even a, a day mm -hmm. uh, before you can start uh, like you rightly mind uh, pointed out yeah the markets will go through ups and downs but you are starting a journey which is hopefully a multi decadal journey you know you're starting to build something really great for the future for yourself and your family and uh, the averaging will take care of many of these challenges that you worry about because the risk is that you procrastinate you don't start now and then what often happens and this has happened to every investor so you know it has happened to me i'm sure it would have happened to you every investor will go through this uh, this yeah. this lure of trying to time the market and so no no it's high now and i'll wait for it to fall and then i'll wait for it to fall further etc and that is a behavioral trap and we have to recognize that you know we will again get caught in that probably the reason why you haven't started so far okay uh, because we got caught somewhere in this trap of saying oh i'm smarter than the market and i'll time it right because what often happens is that at this level you might think oh it's too high which it may be but when things start sliding uh, the news the environment may can get very pessimistic and one doesn't have the courage then to be able to to invest so when a lot of us are telling people that please invest please invest it's very likely that the news around is very pessimistic things are not going right there is some crisis or the other that is either on the anvil or already has happened and the confidence to start then it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. so we get caught in our own sort of trying to time through these cycles and never start and guess what every day you don't start you're losing more time and compounding that mistake which you already made unfortunately <laughs> Okay, I mean, we spoke about uh, uh, the, uh, compounding, the benefit of compounding when it comes to investing, right? Right. Uh, and uh, you have you uh, you have given me this uh, gift of. The, uh, in fact, I have seen uh, like a, uh, what if you are investing something five year, what happened? Right. But if you keep investing for twenty five, right, and what really happened? Right. Could you take us through that, uh, Jenny? That uh, sure. why why that long time means so sure. important when it comes sure. to us having to get in market. so i i i've uh, you know through the years and you know first you have to apply it to yourself and then uh, you know to to people around you and then maybe to the uh, wider audience uh, in most cases when i were to ask someone or uh, ask myself can i really forecast uh, you know the power of compounding i'll get it wrong uh, and, and then you realize that you know even if you are mathematically inclined to comprehend the power of compounding is not intuitive to all of us our brains think linearly you know for it's very difficult for us to see how things build up and that to me is a big miss and that is something we must try and find ways to explain better uh and that's what the sip pen tries to do mm -hmm. 
because when I look at a number and say five years later, where will this become, this amount of saving, where it will become, a lot of people can get it right. But the same number at the same rate of compounding, 25 years later or 30 years later, most of us will get it wrong by a margin. And that's when it hits us that, look, the power of compounding, which is what I'm missing, is so large, right? So just to give you an example, uh, you know, this recently uh, we were talking about a fund and then, you know, that index, that fund has an 18-year history. And uh, that 18, in that 18-year history of that specific index, it has returned about 17%, which, you know, at the first instance seems, yeah, that sounds about right in India, you know, 15 to 17% return, very possible, it is okay. Uh, this happens to be the financial services index from the mm. time it started in 2005 to 2023. What are the compound returns? About 17.3%. So, okay, understood. But what you don't realize is that if I put in 1 lakh rupee, how many times? It would be about 19 lakh rupees. So, in 18 years, it would become almost 19 times. That's what 17.3% represents. Mm. So, that you know, that value is sometimes what we miss. And that's what I think the SIP pain has helped, uh, you know, a lot of investors with. Because when you, it's a compounding table on a pen. So when you look around the different combinations of when you change the period or you change the amount or you change the rate of return, how things change, uh, it, it gives you a better appreciation of the need to invest quickly and stay invested. Okay. And hopefully through our pen, we can try and get and encourage more people to do that. Uh, you know, I think it's a, a valid point because uh, we sometimes, um, uh, we, we gener sometimes we uh, people have a zero savings or zero investing. Then they come and invest for, let's say, five years, 10 years time. And uh, they see a pretty decent uh, return. Uh, then uh, in their in their life they wouldn't have seen this kind of a liquid asset sitting there. Yes. So that is the time a lot of ideas comes into their head. Uh, let's break it and uh, buy some land. Right. Let's break it. Right. Uh, uh, buy some gold. Right. Uh, or buy some car. So uh, how people can um, you know not get into this trap of uh, uh, you know deviating from their uh, gold. Uh, what is your take on you know people to uh, stick around uh, capital market for a longer period right. without worrying about uh, uh, because now I have uh, get about 50 lakh or 1 crore rupees right. if market crash it will go out so right. that is a worry people are trying to take out that money and uh, uh, moving out Right. so uh, what is your advice to tell people once you reach certain corpus how do we continue here yeah yeah so I, I think uh, it is a difficult one I don't think there is a easy way out of this in in many ways uh, but, you know, a couple of suggestions, if I may. Uh, see, one is that, uh, you know, look at hard objective data. Uh, and hard objective data will tell you that uh, capital markets, by and large, have been the most resilient uh, outperformer of inflation, which is where we started with, uh, versus most other asset classes. Right, so whether it is real estate or gold or fixed income or any other form of exotic product, it's not very difficult to see why mathematically or economically. So the theory sort of supports it. But in practice also that has happened. So it's a, it's a very, very strong theoretical foundation of why that should happen. And then you actually see it in practice across markets over periods of time. So let's understand that the theory and the practice of it actually supports that, that outcome. The second is when you compare, and that is more practical, I would request for all investors, when you compare two or three different uh, modes of investing, uh, please be uh, neutral. Don't be biased in the comparison is all I would ask. And why I'm saying that is the following. You're very right that you say, oh, I invested in the market and, you know, I got, let's say, 15% return and, you know, my one lakh became two lakhs now, right, in five years or thereabouts. And now I've got oh, whatever, 10 lakh became 20 lakh. So, okay, now I've got 20 lakh and I market is all time high and I, I think I'll put something over there and there I can double my money. <laughs> now, what you're not counting is that you doubled your money here in five years and you bought a piece of land where you will double the money, but you discount the fact that it happened in 15 years. They intrinsically two different methods of, of counting in one sense because 
you know, the rate of return when your money doubles over 15 years versus 5 years is very, very different. Okay. Now, to compare, therefore, please use one benchmark, which is the annual growth rate, as an example, or at what rate money doubles every, every same period. And then you'll see that, you know, it becomes very, very clear of uh, which is a better investment. Yes, of course, uh, you know, no gain without pain, as they say, no return without risk. Uh, the variability in return in equities can be very high. So that's the pain you have to swallow. But for that pain, the gain can be really outsized. Mm -hmm. So if you want an outsized gain, you have to suffer a bit of volatility in the short term, knowing fully well that across markets, the theory and the experience actually supports the fact that this will outperform. Okay. No, it's, it's great because uh, in terms of real estate, uh, we will end up uh, spending a lot maintaining the land and everything else. Uh, even uh, making a wall around that it's a cost, right? Then probably liquidity is a problem and uh, how to sell. Here is a click of a button, there is a yeah. uh, running around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we, we speak about uh, this, this is more like a behavioral thing is coming. So uh, uh, could you um, uh, tell us that as a, as a advisor, you know, people like us, right? Uh, what is advices for us uh, in terms of uh, um, you know, making our investors to stay focused on that goal. Right. Uh, because I think uh, there are a lot of people are investing directly. Right. But there are people coming to us also because there are uh, uh, people have this question. Uh, yeah. What is the benefit coming? Yeah. Uh, uh, coming to us. Right. But um, so, could you advise us that uh, uh, as an advisor or as a as a distributor, right? Uh, how you how we should really help people to stay invested and uh, have their investment process. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, Nikhil, we are all learning. So, I really don't have any uh, mantra that is proven. But I, all I can maybe try and do is share a few observations and experiences. And in my years of experience in the, you know, wealth management part of the business and the advisory part of the business, when you start, uh, you know, you're very eager and you really want to start with showing all the technical advantages in certain products over others. So you start with a lot of numbers, mm -hmm. right, in showing to your customers, to your uh, friends and relatives how one thing is better than the other. But over the years, you realize that actually advice is and counseling mm -hmm. is 90 plus percent of emotion management. Uh, you know, it's not, it's just the 10% which is the hard numbers or the products and the, you know, the tangible parts of what the outcome is. And, uh, you know, there's nothing uh, odd about that because a lot of work over the last 30, 40 years which is focused on behavioral economics and behavioral sciences is telling you, is trying to find out why that is happening. And it goes back to our evolution, how our brains think, how do we make decisions, etc. And that is basically telling us that in our decision making, uh, you know, the old economic theory assumed that you were making rational decisions and rational choices, therefore you would do this versus that. But in practice, you're not seeing that happen because human beings are not rational. We're not making rational decisions all the time, right? Now, to help that, we've created, in fact, it's available on our YouTube channel, a series called the Money Wisdom Series, mm -hmm. uh, where we collaborated with a very, uh, you know, well-known author, Rod Belly, uh, to talk about in little bites, you know, two, three minutes each, each of these biases, which are more pertinent to investment mistakes. Because in investments, of course, you can make many mistakes, but behavioral mistakes are very common. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, panicking when something is, uh, you know, going going wrong because there's an action bias we have, right? Or not measuring properly, or things like that. So I think our, our role most of the time is hand-holding in counseling more on biases and behavior more than product choices. Uh, fundamentally, investments can have just two or three basic rules if we can follow that. Uh, which is the difficult thing. Yeah. Uh, everyone can make a lot of money. Okay. But following that is that tricky <laughs> portion, <laughs> difficult part. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, sir, uh, when, when we speak about uh, uh, your uh, company as such, uh, IDFC, and because we, uh, we have, uh, so what is the transition from IDFC to Bandit? Uh, mm -hmm. So if you can, uh, you know, talk about that a little bit. So IDFC, uh, you know, the group, 
uh, wanted to simplify its its holding structure and uh, you know the plan was for in order to simplify you had to let go of some of the subsidiaries including ourselves and therefore it had to sell the subsidiary and uh, it recently announced that the group would actually merge back reverse merge into the bank so that was part of the corporate restructuring it was attempting so our sale was in 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 some sense an outcome out of this restructuring exercise and uh, through a very transparent process uh, the idfc group approached uh, you know a lot of uh, potential investors who would be interested in a very interesting area of asset management in india a high growth area and we were delighted to find a consortium of pandan financial services uh, gic of singapore which is a very well known institutional investor is actually a sovereign investor uh, on behalf of the government of singapore apart from managing their currency it actually invests across the world a very large investor and the third one being chris capital which is one of the leading india based uh, private equity firms with deep expertise and knowledge in investing in financial services so three of these shareholders came together okay. to buy the shares of shares of amc and the trustee company and consequent to that we've got renamed bandhan mutual fund uh, but what's important to note is that while the shareholding has changed and through the shareholding now we have three new very committed and very strong shareholders the management team the strategies the investment processes the schemes that investors have have put money into they remain the same okay uh, so this continuity at that end which is beneficial for investors but there's also faster growth prospects in terms of the investments and the capabilities that the new shareholders are bringing yep. uh, that can benefit all of us as employees as well as our our entire stakeholders whether it's partners whether it is investors uh, because of the growth potential that a new shareholder see in this business okay okay so basically in terms of the fund names and everything only the the name, name will change yeah. but uh, in terms right. of fund managers team yeah. everything remains that's there. right all of the processes the governance the systems the controls uh, the investment strategies the team structures all of that remains the same yeah, okay okay yeah. very good yeah. yeah of course we would look to expand more aggressively and okay. we would want to do better and better Uh, because this is a exciting area of the market okay and uh, there is so much growth potential like we mentioned we are just about scratching the surface in terms of growth okay uh, so we are all very excited about uh, you know the next phases that the market will offer in terms of growth for all of us yeah, really i am definitely i'm looking forward to see the growth of uh, bandhan uh, at the same time i'm really looking forward to see that what is the next uh, educational content you are going to bring that's <laughs> yeah. so that uh, any any new innovation in terms of simplifying uh, the concepts yeah that's right no and and you know this is something that we are very passionate about uh, so as if you think about the company's purpose uh, you know what are we really trying to do uh, you know we we've thought hard about it and you know what we see as a common passion across the team is to try and get every saver mm. to become an investor mm-hmm. uh, you know they we have lots of savers in the country yeah. how can we move them transition them okay to be active with their money okay right so that's that's what we are trying to do now to do that there's a whole host of things we have to do uh education awareness is one part but of we're making that you know making sure that the right products are available the right processes channels access service is available the right modes of uh, communication is available so there's a whole host of things around it uh, to achieve this objective to achieve this purpose uh, that we are all working towards uh, the potential is just enormous uh from where we are right now every other metric will tell us so as an example a uh, unique mutual fund investors so the potential investors in the country you know we are maybe 110th 120th of what we could be doing uh aum to gdp ratio you know we are far lower than the global average so again a lot of penetration possible etc household savings we spoke about so there are many metrics which tells us that there's a lot more to be done in the future we've already done uh and that continues to be very popular i really encourage all your viewers mm-hmm. to go on youtube it's a free resource please use it see it on a large screen at least on a, on your tv uh our two movies one idiot and, and return of one idiot and you will find that it it, it uses a contrasting sort of uh, narrative 
but both will hopefully encourage you to start yeah. uh, right so that's something uh, i would encourage your your uh, viewers to look at compounding tables use our sip yeah, pad yeah, if you yeah. can send it across yeah. to you we'd be most happy to we will but be. use your you know so understand compound very yeah. important right because these are all basic principles we want to make sure that everyone you know gets gets the message in one sense and uh, we work on sam ki samasya that you mentioned uh, yeah, which is only to our audience yeah which is a problem solving solving approach you know if you had to solve the problem and you find that you know a lot of this is very very logical very very uh, you know relatable uh, we are also working on online games so there's the bandhan game of life that we're working on uh, with some of our newer age online uh, you know potential investors can look at uh, to see how in life uh, financial situation may change and what can you do what are the you know the the core rules that one can follow to make sure that you have a better financial outcome uh, with the hard earned savings that you have <laughs> it's it's good and i think uh, when we uh, talk about uh, uh, your uh, company as such in terms of managing fund uh could you uh, just take us through that uh, what are the best practices you follow or like um, uh, how do you really uh, pick a uh, investment into your uh, schemes in in like uh, uh, if i'm investing with uh, uh, and then yeah. that uh, uh, for me to understand in a very layman's language yeah. what are the few things which you kind of uh, filter down to make sure that our uh, money is uh, in a you know in a in a proper hands right right So uh, there are many things that we go into it of course uh, you know it can be understood by us <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so you know for any asset manager and you know definitely for us you will want to make sure that your core systems processes and practices including uh, you know control metrics etc is absolutely the best in class and there you will benchmark to global standards uh we do have a very robust regulatory framework as well uh, so some of the things that we're doing in india in terms of regulations are absolutely the uh, best standard that you will find in fact in some cases even even better than that and very effective for our own experience in that sense so that's i think a great starting point that we have access to the best regulatory framework as well as the tools techniques technology and talent that is available Uh, for us to do a good job right so that's that's a great base and starting point after that when we start looking at constructing products right across the asset classes uh you can have two or three different approaches firstly is it an active strategy or a passive strategy so that's the first level for an investor as well that is the first question you know do you want a passive strategy where you just want to replicate what the market is doing or is it an active strategy where you are asking the fund manager to take you know a different call on an active position and try and beat the market right so that's the first level of it the second level is that among our products you will find certain products which are meant as components of a package in a sense so there you very sharply define the strategy that a fund will offer Mm-hmm. so think about uh, you know an ingredient to a salad rather than a full salad itself which is fully mixed right okay. so the ingredient to the salad may be for example uh, let's say a small cap fund right in itself would should your portfolio be entirely in small cap i would say no right it is a component of a overall portfolio that you should have right so within the small cap fund how you define it becomes very important and we would try and do the definition or take the level of definition a couple of levels lower than what the regulatory minimum is in a sense so there's a regulatory requirement yes but in addition what can we do to define it more tightly so that's the other thing similarly in debt and that becomes even more interesting so you have a short term fund but you know within the short term fund definition of a debt fund there's a lot of leeway but we can be tighter than that so the idea is that if it's a sophisticated investor or our distribution partners who are sophisticated they have a better clearer way of knowing or expecting the right outcome out of this product of course there are no guarantees yeah, yeah. but at least you know that this is the the deeper intent mm-hmm. and the style which the fund manager will use so we are defining the products at a level we think which is 
much more than what the minimum requirement is with the objective that you should be able to therefore get a clearer picture mm. about what to expect. How much risk will we take or not take? You know, how will we benchmark or, you know, how uh, deviant will we be? Because it's an active fund. By definition, it will have to take a slightly different position than the underlying benchmark. Mm -hmm. But how much leeway will we take in this fund? So that has to be defined properly and that's what we're trying to do. And there are some funds which are packaged products where you give us the license to run in a sense, right? So those are packaged products. We'll say, okay, yeah, I'll just put the money there and you know you run it whichever way you want. So all these three types of products are available okay. uh, depending on the need, uh, whether you, know, you want a packaged salad or you want to create your own salad or you want something more sterile, uh, you can choose. Yeah. So we, we spoke about uh, different uh, approaches you take in terms yeah. of investing, right? So... Um, for example, if if you're a um, if you're a younger person starting your career initially, right. or in in your stage also, how uh, you would have uh, you uh, st start uh, with uh, these kind of mix available with uh, uh, you know mutual fund? Yeah. So uh, I, I think Nikhil, none of us started like that. Uh, uh, so we made all the mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what I'd what I'd encourage everyone to do is learn from our mistakes, <laughs> and hopefully not do it. Uh, you know, don't don't make the mistakes again. Or if even if you have to make a small mistake, don't make very big mistakes. Mm. So I would say, you know, from whatever, and we've done, you know, lots of tried out lots of things across the investment journey over the years. But some of the core principles are just run through across every asset class, every market, right? Yeah. Which is, if I were to again simplify, uh, firstly, you know, invest, don't just save. You know, that's again, I go back because most of us don't even get past that hurdle. We keep saving and saying, oh, I'm waiting for the right time to invest, doesn't happen. Start today, right? Second, once you've started investing, stay, you know, stay invested as long as possible. As they say, you know, Time in the market is much more important than timing the market, right? So give compounding a real chance. And if you have to understand why, just look at a table compounding, let's say as an example, 10 rupees or 100 rupees, whatever, you know, you want to start with uh, over 5 year, 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, 40 year, 50 year at let's say 15% per annum. And look at that number. Just trace that number, you'll understand what I'm saying, right? So give it a lot of time, right? So second thing, give compounding a full thing. Third thing, keep, be very wary of your own behavioral biases. That's what gets in the way. So discipline, you know, being systematic, uh, not getting too close uh, and trying to do things. And, you know, because that is the biggest challenge that behaviorally and a lot of analysis has shown that fund managers are able to give you a lot of returns, but you are not making the return where you got in and got out uh, too frequently. So you give it time, you'll make the returns, you know, have that faith. Yeah. Right. And fourth, I would say is that focus on asset allocation. How much in which asset actually is a far bigger decision than which product and which style and you know, is it small cap or multi cap or this and that and the other. How much in equity has to be the first uh, question before that. And your proportion of equity to debt or other asset classes, what is that allocation meant to do? Uh, you know, that is a far bigger decision uh, eventually. Uh, then really the product selection or negotiating the price on the entry timing, should it be today, tomorrow, and this, that, etc. All of that will not matter uh, in the long run. But how much you had allocated in different asset classes and what's the, the core construct of your portfolio is, is going to matter a lot more. Okay, great, great. I think uh, uh, the first thing you said, invest. And then <laughs> let's start. <laughs> I'll start with it. Yeah. And then uh, keep it for longer period instead of yes. uh, uh, timing. Then uh, uh, avoid that behavioral biases to right. uh, get uh, uh, that investment return versus investor uh, yes, return right. to. And the, don't try and do too many things. You know, every time the market goes up or goes down, you call your advisor saying, "No, no, I want to pull out or I want to invest today, etc." You know, against. Stay the course, essentially. You know, you have a plan, stay the course. Don't get too close to it. Uh, I think we make a lot more mistakes now that we have prices available thanks to technology every day, every hour than some of the mistakes when we were just ignorant, you know. 
Uh, we hear lots of cases of people who invested 20, 30 years back, forgot about that folio and now discovered, you know, because yeah. of some KYC refresh or something that, oh, I have this money. And I'm absolutely pleasantly delighted, not just surprised yeah. to see the outcome. So if you just forget about it, you'll actually have a very good no, outcome. True, true, true. I think uh, we also see that when we, uh, you know, uh, are doing someone and uh, then we uh, start investing and uh, Sometimes uh, we get a call and asking that uh, why no changes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are uh, watching that and uh, we are thinking that you know uh, why we need to really make that change yeah. if if it's That's right. not really needed. That's right. Especially uh, there are people who have a pretty decent track record and the management style is a pretty right. uh, you know consistent and everything. So right. we keep it for it. But yes. there are cases that why. Uh, no changes. Yes. Uh, so that is uh, uh, sometimes we, yes. we get that uh, goal. And uh, you, sp you spoke about um, asset allocation. So sometimes uh, even in equity portfolio, also we try to see that uh, some portion should be there as a debt. Yes. Uh, hoping that uh, if uh, at least if a market correction happens to reinvest. Yes. yes. So that also sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, saying that okay, this one has a 10 percent, this one has only. Uh, you know, uh, five percentage. Why? Yeah. Uh, why don't we uh, shift to that? And yeah. uh, and you know, sometimes gold uh, when we invest, yeah. if if it's not matching that, uh, then uh, people get to panic. Right. These are the you know. Uh, I think we are uh, facing this problem. Yes. What is your uh, final advice uh, to our uh, audience uh, uh, in, in terms of? I'm sure that uh, from my questions, you kind of understood that what kind of audience also kind of expect also. So. Um, what is your final uh, advice to me and uh, for our audience in right. terms of investing and uh, money management? So my my uh, own uh, realization uh, as an investor uh, has been that uh, when it's your own money, it's very difficult to not be biased, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's my hard-earned savings, right? And I think we must recognize that even the best of players uh, need a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the role of the coach or someone who's objective, the best of CEOs need a mentor, need a, you know, a coach of some nature because that's the person who can objectively at least stand apart and show you a mirror and saying, look, this is what is happening, this is where you're going wrong. So the role of the coach or the mentor or the, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the objective sort of guidance that is required for an investor is best done by someone else, that someone else should ideally be an advisor or a distributor or someone you can really build up a relationship with or you trust that they will do it, have the right expertise, experience, and is working in your favor. And I would say rely on that person. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't know, you definitely need that person. But it's when you know a lot, I would say you, again, definitely need that person because you will end up making all sorts of mistakes because we all think we know and we are then just too short-sighted or too emotionally attached mm -hmm. because it's your own heart and savings. Right. Uh, so my advice to your investors will be under both circumstances, both extremes, wherever you are, uh -huh. uh, get yourself an advisor or a distributor or someone who's licensed to do this business. Okay. Uh, right In the mutual fund world, uh, you know, Amphi hands out an ARN license for people who've passed a specific exam uh, who are then, you know, certified to offer uh, in this guidance. And there are registered investment advisors as well uh, who can do this. So get, you know, get, get in touch with one of these uh, groups of people. Uh, and uh, you, if you don't know, definitely you need this. <laughs> I know a lot, you again need them. Our uh, behavioral uh, issues, which yes. you, you mentioned. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you. And uh, uh, and I'm sure that uh, this discussion definitely add a lot of value to our people. And definitely to me, it's a, a lot of learning also. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, um, uh, your company and... Uh, uh, you can definitely help all of us to uh, make money and manage our money well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for doing all the good work. Thank you for so much for having me, Nikhil, and it was a real pleasure uh, interacting with you. Wish you and your viewers and all savers all the best to become an investor. Yeah. And I'm sure that, you know, some of these things seem very simplistic, but I can, uh, you know, with, 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 uh, with, reasonable certainty tell you, tell you that you know follow uh, 
three or four of the five things that I've mentioned, and I think we'll all be very, very happy with the outcomes that we saw. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.